guys, I'm Sifu Dung and welcome back. Today we are talking about Shaolin's exotic and auspicious dragon style. Now, traditionally, by nature, the dragon is very exotic animal, but also very exotic style. And it was surrounded by mystique. Now, traditionally in dragon style, it is considered both an internal and external style of Kung Fu. The internal portion is the coiling soft motions of a snake-like body. But of course, unlike a snake, the dragon has claws, which it strikes, rips, tears, and grabs with. And so this is the external style. So what we're going to be doing today is exploring the training, the conditioning, as well as some of those dragon techniques. So let's get to work. All right, now, one of the most unique things about the dragon style is it's classified as both an internal as well as an external style. Now, we, when we talk about internal, we talk about connection. Now, the connectivity between the waist, the upper body, the torso, the movements, the hands, everything is all connected. Now, the way we achieve that is we first think about movement itself. Now, the way I like to think about it is by thinking about a cube versus a ball. Now, if you take a cube and you move it from one point to another, it just flops or plops over. So it makes it very clunky. Whereas a ball or a sphere, it has multiple points upon that surface, which makes the movement very smooth. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going through some of the exercises to help smooth things out and keep the body connected. All right. Now, one of the first steps we're going to take to help work on connectivity or connection within the body is really working on flexibility and also range of motion. So the way we like to do this is we're going to start off by working on our square horse and we're going to be transitioning through one of our bow senses. So we're going to start by our square horse. What we can do is from this position is we're going to walk it out. We're going to go toes, heels, toes, heels and then we're going to sink down now we talked about square horse in one of our other videos before so don't forget to check that one out now if we get this position of our square horse we want to be able to sink in here once we sink what this does is it helps loosen up the hips helps open things up now as you transition we're going to move over to a bow stance now what that means is we're going to pivot our back foot to a 45 so it's going to be pointing in and we're going to get into a bow or a wedge stance now from this position we want to make sure that we're putting the weight onto here so we're looking at a 70 30 80 20 weight distribution we want to really kind of push that weight for here just for this training purposes now if you can go a little bit further go a little bit further what i like to do is I, when i come back to square horse i'll actually walk it out a little bit more and so that way i can get a nice long motion with this wedge stance or bow stance. Again, I'll get from here, come back to a square center position and really stretch. Now, what we wanna be able to do is slowly transition so that way we come through and back out. We wanna come through our square horse and back out to our bow stance the other side. We come back through and back out now once we get to these positions we want to make sure that the hips are squared and our shoulders are squared as well now one of the things we want to make sure we pay attention to is that when we are in that bow stance we don't want to have what we refer to as sassy hip syndrome now what that is is basically is your hips and are in a position we don't want them to push one way or the other we want to make sure that they're nice and straight the back stays nice and straight and we lean into us and then what that's going to do is give us not only a smoother transition but it's going to take care of our joints okay now taking that last drill another step further what we're going to do is we're going to work a little bit more on the flexibility of the waist and the hips so we're going to come back out to our square horse position we can utilize the same bow stance so we're going to turn all the way over from this position now from this position we will next want to come over our knee as we roll through we're going to come to center and over the other knee we're going to lean the body back and then we're going to come back to square now once we come up to square our body wants to make sure that the nose is in alignment with the navel we're straight up and down 
but we want to make sure that we're looking straight ahead here. We want to make sure we're not looking up because now this puts strain on the neck. You want to keep that spine in alignment. Now from here, we're just going to go back over to the other side. You can keep your hands on your legs and we're going to again reach our chest over our knee and now we're going to slide through that square horse. Now in this position, I'm not propping my hands on my legs to give me support. I'm actually very loose. What I want to do is again straighten and loosen up the back area as we come all the way over to the other knee, lift the torso up, turn back to center. Now once you get this motion down, we can smooth out those edges a little bit more as we come all the way through and all the way up. All the way through and all the way up. So again, this helps in terms of smoothing out those round edges. We start off very rough and then we start smoothing out the edges so that way it creates a more connected type of motion. Okay, for our next drill that's gonna help us with our dragon, we're gonna be working on grip strength. And what we do is we're gonna grab that stick again. Now we've used this in other videos and other animal styles. And a lot of times we used it for grabbing, to work on our dexterity, to work on our timing. In this case, grip strength. So we're gonna start this off with two basic exercises. So first hand, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna grab it straight up and down. Now the other hand is gonna be on top. Now, if we look at this, they should be facing opposite directions. Now, what we're going to simply do is we're going to rotate the fist inward towards us. Now, as we do that, we want to squeeze hard, almost as if we were trying to wring water out of the stick. From here, we're going to push it back out. Okay. Squeeze as we ring in, push and also squeeze as we go out. Squeeze as we ring in and push as you go out. Now, the other way we want to do this is actually if we flip this hand around so that way we're on the same side. In staff terms, this is a double-ended grip. Now, if we're doing it in the double-ended grip, what we want to be able to do is we want to push one hand and pull the other. So we want to squeeze, push and pull, squeeze, push and pull. So it's going to be going back and forth. You're going to have a slight moment of relaxation in between this, but otherwise we want to squeeze, fairly hard, again, like we're wringing water out of. Now, of course, like always, if you wanna bring a little more training component to this, we use our stancing. So we're gonna start off in a square horse and it would be the same thing. We squeeze and we squeeze, we squeeze and squeeze, wring it out. Now, same thing from this position, we would bring it in, push it out. Bring it in, push it out. Now, as we do this, Again, you want to make sure to take it at your own pace because it is conditioning. We don't want to rip your hands up so that way you can't train later on. But slow it over time, you'll be able to find that it becomes stronger, your grip becomes stronger, as well as the motions become smoother. All right, now in the dragon style, we have a multitude of different type of hand techniques. One of the most significant ones in the Cholifat system that we use to signify the dragon style is our chunao or our anchor hand. Now the way we make our chunao is basically we open up the hands and we crimp the fingers in like a tiger claw or fu jiao. Now from here we extend our first finger and then we try to touch the pinkies and thumbs together but we don't actually touch them together. From here we turn it at a 45 degree angle. Now the chunao is known as a bridging technique or an anchor hand technique as uh, for blocking. We also can use that same type of position and we tilt it straight up and down and we use it for attacking. So we may attack the face, we may attack the groin. We also utilize the tiger style of grabbing, which is that Fu Jiao again, and we use it in a Cha Kyu position, which is used for grabbing, ripping, and tearing. Now, the dragon also has closed fisted techniques. So in this position, we have a back fist or a Da Choi, we also have a sweeping or so choy fist, and this is to signify the dragon's tail as it whips and coils around the body. So we're gonna be using this through a lot of the different techniques that we're gonna be going over and moving forward. All right, so for the next part, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be utilizing some of those fist techniques. Now there's gonna be two fist techniques we're gonna be working on in particular with this drill. 
The first one is going to be the so choy or that sweeping fist. And then the other one is going to be the bujong, okay? Or this is going to be a shooting style of fist, which has a twisting component to it. So we're going to start off in a square horse position. As we come across, we want to be able to sweep that fist. Now it rotates in a position here and turns upside down. We're going to utilize the forearm as well as the first two knuckles as we come back and through. From this position, next, we want to turn and rotate the palm over. As we do that, we're gonna rotate into our bow stance as we extend straight on out. So now from here, we're gonna come back. One, come back with the so choy. Two, rotate the palm, come into the bujong. One is our so choy. Two is our bujong. Now as we do this, we want to sweep, connect with the body. That's why we always start off slow. We want to connect the so choy or the sweeping fist to the waist as it comes through here and then we connect back out. Now ultimately it's going to come out as a figure eight where it's going to come down and then come back out. So we're going to go one, two, one, two. All right. This is for all my application fans out there. Don't worry. I didn't forget about you. Now. We have two techniques that we're going to be going over. Now, first one we're going to deal with is going to be dealing with the punch tack situation. The first thing we want to do is actually we're going to use that anchor hand or chu now position that we talked about before. Now, to form that hand again, we would want to open up that hand as wide as you can. We're going to crimp those fingers in like the tiger claw or fu jiao. From here, we want to extend the first finger and we want to touch almost the thumb and the pinky together. From here, we want to turn it 45 degrees. And now the key thing in using this type of technique is actually the rotation right here of the wrist. When you do this, what this is, is it's contracting this area right here. Now that is what makes contact. That is what makes this bridging technique actually effective. So step one, first thing we want to do is from here is we're going to step out and we're going to bridge that technique. We're going to meet that opponent's strike halfway in. So we want to make sure we neutralize it by rotating it out. That disrupts the line of energy that's coming in at us. Now from this position from here, we're going to now utilize a blocking motion down this way from here. So this is our pun Q or a downward circular blocking motion. So we're going to go one. Now from here, we're going to go two. From this position, we have that fist back here. We're going to swing the dragon's tail through. And now we're going to rotate the palm over so that way the palms up now as we do this we're going to step out and rotate it over and out so again let's go we have one two three rotate over four all right so again i'm going to face forward we're going to do it again we're going to go one two three four all right, so when we do it quickly, it should have a nice smooth transition where it's gonna go one, two, three, four. Right on out. So let's take a look at how that's gonna work. All right, now another variation to this technique is where we can take it and we can condense it down. Now that all depends on the actual attack situation itself. We can plan for it to be a right punch. We can plan for it to be a right left punch. So there's different variations and there's different variables to the technique, depending on what your opponent's going to do. So of course that means we have to be flexible and we have to make it work like we've always talked about before. So in this one, what we're going to do is we're going to start off. We're going to shorten up our stance. We're going to start off with the same anchor hand bridging technique from here. Now, we used it before where we block downward. In this case, what we're going to do is we can actually just grab on. So if we're working to the inside of someone, we can grab right into them from here, grabbing onto the head, grabbing onto clothes, whatever. Now, from this, instead of sweeping with a long motion, if we're really close in because we're grabbing, a long motion is really not going to do the trick. So what we're going to do is we're going to shorten it up and we're going to swing through with an elbow technique. All right, smashing right in. Now from this, we'll step out. Again, what this does is it takes up that space and we're gonna, instead of rolling out with a long motion, is we're gonna roll into a short motion with our back fist. 
All right. So again, we're going to have the same thing. We're going to go one, two, three. So it's same technique, just condensed down. And again, it's really where, how we're going to make it fit. Okay, our next technique is a very traditional dragon style technique as well. So we're going to start this one off as a punch attack. When we do this, we're going to be utilizing a rotating block as well. So the first one we're going to do is from here is we're going to step back as we rotate the block across the body. Now in this case, what we're doing is by rotating the block here and stepping back, we're forcing our opponent to reach. We're not where our opponent last saw us. We're stepping out out of that position, giving us some distance, but also making that connection point. Now, from this position from here, we're gonna be doing and twisting with that dragon claw as we roll over. So we're gonna be grabbing at this point. From here, we have that circular block. Left hand's gonna come over as you step in. Now, from here, we're gonna make a fist with that back hand and we're gonna rotate down and through. So again, another one of those lashing style of dragon techniques. Okay, so again, we have one, two, three, four. All right. So again, one, two, three, four. Now, if I do it forward, we're going to go from this position. We're going to step back. One, two, three, four. All right. So let's take a look, see how that's going to work. All right, so for technique number two. So from this position, what we're gonna do is we're gonna allow that person, as they're throwing that punch, we're gonna allow them to come in by stepping back. Again, making sure we're not where they last saw us. We're gonna now block with that rotating downward block here. From this position, we're gonna twist and grab that same hand. Now from here, that next motion that we're gonna do is gonna be blocking downward with that backhand. Now we have two options. If they're throwing another punch, we can block downward. If not, we can compress down on that original punch. From here, we'll make that fist come across as we now strike across the upper portion of the body, temple, chin, side of the neck, carotid artery, depending on what's open. All right, like always, we always have a sawed off shotgun version of the technique as well. So now, as that person comes in from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit shorter of a step. We don't need a large step. We can just deflect straight on in. Now from here, if we can grab, great. If we can't, that's okay too. All we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate and push that hand off to the side. So we're gonna rotate, push the hand off to the side. From here, we're gonna step in. It's gonna be a short compression and now strike straight on in. Now, when we strike straight on in, we don't need a large motion. If we're relaxed, we can snap. And where the key is, is that rotation of the wrist. So when we snap across, to take that strike. Well, I hope you enjoyed exploring some of the ins and outs of the dragon style. As always, make sure if you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe, ring the bell. But most importantly, stay active. Keep practicing, and I'll see you on the next one. Hey guys, I'm Sifu Dung, and welcome back. Today we are talking about Shaolin's exotic and auspicious dragon style. Now, just by nature, the exotic animal of a dragon and also the style of a dragon is one that has been surrounded in mystique. Now, traditionally in dragon style, you don't hit the damn banner, so your crap swings and you're running. <laughs>